Welcome back. I'm Evan Thorpe. This is Michelle Martinelli, and this is For the Wins College Football Breakdown. And let's start with the team that's been ruining college football for all of us, <laughs> Alabama. They beat LSU 29-0, to and we talked about it last week. We thought this would be a true right. test. That test came in the first drive, but then after that, the test was out the door, and Alabama just cruised their way through a victory. Yeah, I, I mean, what does it say about a team when we're talking about they were tested in only the first drive, right? This is the first time that Alabama has had to punt on its first possession all season long. And so at the beginning of the game, you're thinking, hey, this might be competitive. This yeah. might be interesting. You know, their punter's out on the field in the first quarter. What is that all about? And then it turns out that's all it needed for quarterback Tua Tungavailoa and the offense to find its rhythm and, and get in and just pick LSU's defense apart. Yeah, Tua had over 300 yards combined in the air and on the ground, three touchdowns, two passing, oh. one rushing. And just when we thought, like, we saw Tua take a step back with an interception, it was just like, you know what, we're just going to tease you guys. We're going to tease the audience and the fans watching. We're this good. And what did we learn from Alabama from this game? I think a lot of it, um, a big takeaway from this is that you have to look at Alabama's defense. Um, last year, their defense finished number one in the country, and they they weren't looking particular, like as dominant as they were. You know, they're excellent compared to other team standards, yeah. but compared to Alabama's standards, um, you're having some questions about its defense because you know they gave up 31 points to Arkansas, they gave up 21 points to Tennessee, and that didn't really matter when your offense was so prolific and scoring. 20, 30, 40, 60 points, yeah. that doesn't matter, right? And so you're wondering how they were going to match up against LSU. And the fact that Alabama's defense kept LSU, the number three team in the country, off the board, I think we learned that this this defense is excellent. And it might not be the, the dominant defense that we've seen in past Alabama years, but you can't tell me this isn't one of the best defenses in the whole country. Yeah, I'll give you that. But offensively, you can just credit their success off of Tua, yeah. and he's the Heisman front runner. We had- I mean, by a long shot. Yeah, early in the year, we had different guys like Dwayne Haskins up there with him. We had Kyler Murray, but through 10 weeks, he's the Heisman favorite, and I'm pretty sure he's gonna win the trophy. I mean, it, it, he, he had more than 70% completion percentage, up until this point, it actually dipped a little bit, and part of that probably was because he played in the first quarter for the first time on Saturday, too. He also threw his first interception on Saturday. But when you think about it, that's a huge reason why he is in this conversation and running away with the Heisman Trophy based just before our eyes. It took until week 10 for him to throw his first pick. And granted, he didn't do that by himself. That's Those are talented targets that he's throwing out. That's an exceptional offensive line that's giving him time to make those uh, decisions. But that's crazy that he's putting up ridiculous numbers, has a very high completion percentage, and only just through his first interception. And one of the first times he played a full game. Yeah, it was the first time he played in the fourth quarter this whole season. Yeah, so not only has Alabama already won the Heisman Award, they're already in the SEC <laughs> Championship game. Alabama and Georgia are already booked for three to four weeks down the line to play in the SEC Championship game. And has Alabama ruined the suspense of college football knowing that they're already going to be in the SEC Championship game? So these three games for the remainder of the season are just like bye weeks. I mean, yes and no, right? Obviously, if some mountain moving miracle happens and Alabama loses, that's obviously going to affect their national championship and playoff hopes. Um, but I, I, I think it's just... It's surprising that this early, when there's still three weeks left of the regular season, that we know that Alabama is going to play Georgia in the SEC championship game. Um, both of those were decided this past weekend when Georgia beat Kentucky. And yeah, it, it sort of seems like we've gone from watching a competitive Alabama team that you pretty sure know is going to win to a team that now you're so confident they're gonna win, it's like watching highlight reels mm -hmm. or a clinic versus an actual competitive game. Um, I had the opportunity last week to speak with ESPN broadcaster Paul Feinbaum, who obviously specializes in the SEC, 
and he had said that he thought Alabama has sucked a little bit of the oxygen out of college football this season. And it's hard to disagree with that because they're just, they're playing so well that no one can keep up with them. Yeah. And that's fun to watch. But in terms of competitive football, it's not. It's yeah. kind of boring. Well, some competitive matches that we can look forward to this weekend. Michigan State has a chance to upset the struggling Buckeyes at home. What does Michigan State have to do in order to upset Ohio State's chances of even getting get in the Big Ten Championship? Well, so home field advantage definitely helps, but they've got to keep Ohio State off the board early. Um, we've seen Ohio State struggle the last few weeks. Mm -hmm. They did not easily beat Minnesota. They then lost to Purdue and barely beat Nebraska last week. And if they want to keep their playoff hopes alive, they've got to get to the Big Ten Championship game, and they cannot do that without winning out. They mm -hmm. already have one Big Ten loss to Purdue, and a second one knocks them out of contention. So they're really in a win-or-go-home situation here. Um, but they're just just—they're on sort of a downward trend yeah. this whole this season. They're not the same team that we saw that opened the season, and they're struggling. And if Michigan State can take advantage of that, you're definitely looking at an upset possibility. Yeah, it seems like after they beat Penn State, both teams just started crashing down. And they did, really. Luckily they for did. Ohio State, they still have a chance to go to the Big Ten Championship and potentially get in, but, you know, the way they've been playing, if they come out like they did last week, it's likely they're going to get upset. Uh, the team that we've been talking about <laughs> all this, this episode, Alabama, they play Mississippi State in – Will we learn anything from this game? No! What more do you want to learn about this Alabama team? Their offense is incredible. Tua has so many different people to throw to. They're beating you by multiple touchdowns, regardless of how many points their defense is holding you to. What else are you looking for? Can they beat other top-ranked teams? Can they beat other SEC teams? Can they beat an NFL team like the Buffalo Bills and Nathan Peterman? <laughs> I think we will want to see that. Last game we're going to talk about Oklahoma versus Oklahoma State. We know that Calamari and his Oklahoma team still has a chance to get into the college football playoffs, but what do they have to do and what has to go their way in order for that to happen? So like so many other teams, their college football playoff scenario hinges on whether or not they're going to win out, mm -hmm. right? But Oklahoma has to do so much more than just win out, even though it has a 34% chance of getting in the playoff right now. That's not bad, behind 40% from Georgia and 50% from Michigan. Mm -hmm. um, but it has to do more than win out and win the Big 12 championship. It needs help from some other pieces. It needs the Big 10 champion to have two losses. Yeah. It needs Georgia to lose to Alabama in the SEC championship game and lose badly. And maybe even still needs a loss from Notre Dame or a loss from Clemson to give it an extra boost as a one loss Big 12 champion, conference champion, yeah. that's how is that gonna look compared to everyone else who's still a reasonable contender? Give it them an even playing field almost. Right, like it needs help. Winning out is not gonna be enough like it will be for Ohio State and like it will be for Georgia. It has to have some other pieces fall first. Well, lucky for them, their conference championship game has yet to be determined, unlike the SEC, so there's hope. <laughs> There's hope for them and other teams in the division. Well, until then, I'm Evan Thorpe. This is Michelle Martinelli. Thank you guys for watching and listening to us rant about how Alabama ruined the college football season. Tune in next week.